Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchising. I'm Francisco Moya, the chair of the subcommittee. And we are joined today by council members uh, Costa Constantinidis, uh, Rory Lansman, uh, Steve Levin, Antonio Reynoso, Donovan Richards, uh, Barry Gradenchek, Carlina Rivera. We also have Chair Salamanca, uh, Council Members Yeager, Diaz Sr., uh, Chair Adams, Cabrera, and Gibson. Thank you for being here. Oh, and Council Member Traeger. Uh, today we will be taking votes on two applications, uh, the Sea Park North rezoning on the, and the Jerome Avenue rezoning. Sea uh, Park North rezoning applications LU15 and 16 consist of a zoning map amendment to change the existing R5 zoning to a mix of R5, R6, and R6A, and an R7A zoning districts, and a zoning text amendment to establish the mandatory inclusionary housing program in the rezoned area. Approval of these actions will facilitate the development of a 153-unit affordable housing development financed by HPD's extremely low and low-income affordability program. We will be voting to remove the MIH option two from the rezoned area to ensure that the resulting development complies with MIH option one. Council Member Traeger supports Council Member Traeger supports approval uh, with this modification. And I know that uh, Council Member Traeger, you have a statement? Thank you to uh, Chair Moya, and uh, later I'll thank as well as the land, full land use Chair Salamanca as well, and to the, uh, the incredibly helpful land use uh, staff, Roger Mann, Brian Paul, Dylan Casey, Amy Levitan, uh, also Ramon uh, Martinez, Jason Goldman, uh, everyone has, was very helpful. This is a uh, land use application that will construct and build 100% affordable, deep affordable housing in Coney Island, including housing units at 30, 40, 50% AMI. As mentioned by the chair, this development will be, will be built under MIH option one. Uh, we are repurposing, redeveloping an underutilized lot that just currently collects dust, and we are trying to very much address a, an affordable housing crisis in my neighborhood as well as across the city of New York. There is a commitment by the applicant uh, for local hiring, both for construction and permanent jobs. I do believe that we should have a broader policy conversation uh, that, about the idea of good jobs with, and good benefits in the context of projects that receive significant city subsidies. Uh, the commitment also uh, we have uh, from uh, the applicant HPD to engage with the local Coney Island community uh, to prepare for lottery readiness and, and uh, to really fully advertise the lottery and the housing opportunities here. Uh, there is 50% com local community board preference the commitment as well from the applicant to support the greater commercial revitalization needs of Coney Island's key commercial corridors, particularly Mermaid Avenue. There's a commitment from the administration to study uh, traffic safety measures around the project and existing uh, sewer infrastructure. And there's a commitment from the applicant to develop on-site resiliency measures, including bioswales and stormwater uh, retention tanks. And uh, with that, I will turn back to the chair uh, this application does have my support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member Traeger, and we are joined by Council Member Torres and Council Member Miller. Uh, next, we have the Jerome Avenue rezoning. Uh, the rezoning is a neighborhood-wide rezoning in communities board four, five, and seven along Jerome Avenue in the Bronx. The rezoning application LU18 would change a variety of zoning districts in the area to establish a framework 
uh, of R7A, R7D, R8A, R9A, and C4D districts along the corridor. The zoning text amendment LU17 would establish the special Jerome Avenue district, which would establish special use, bulk, and urban design regulations along Jerome Avenue and establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area in the portions that are being rezoned to allow for greater residential density. Lastly, the city map amendment LU19 would map block 2520, lot 19 as parkland to facilitate the development of Corporal Fisher Park. We will be voting to approve the zoning map amendment and city map amendment on modifications to the text amendment application. We are modifying the zoning text in order to ensure that portions of the rezoned area that are being changed from R8 zoning districts to R8A zoning will maintain the currently applicable floor area and height regulations. We will also be moving MIH option two, removing MIH option two from the area to ensure affordable housing development reach the lowest incomes possible. These approvals will establish a zoning framework to promote the development of much needed affordable housing in the area. In addition to the zoning framework, Council Members Gibson and Cabrera have worked diligently with the administration on commitments for solely needed investments for the area surrounding the Jerome Avenue corridor. These commitments are too numerous to list here, but I will list a few highlights the city has committed to. Building two new 458 seat primary schools in community district nine and 10, preserving 2,500 affordable housing over the next two years. The city has also committed to invest 60 million in parks infrastructure, 50 million in transportation and streetscape improvements and to create a Jerome Public Health Task Force that will produce a neighborhood health plan. These investments will help to ensure that the increased development in the area will be accompanied by improvements in vital city services in the area. Before we move, yeah. right. These investments will help to ensure that the increased development in the area will be accompanied by the improvements in vital city services in the area. This rezoning, though, I feel has missed an opportunity yet again for the residents in one of the most underserved communities. The Jerome Avenue rezoning was an opportunity for this administration to fulfill their goals on affordable housing while also uplifting residents along the corridors. And while progress has been made, a number of these issues still remained uns unresolved. A, the, construction workforce, the construction workforce piece of this rezoning has been inadequately addressed. For example, what we will what we will do to put standards in place over, for over the 3,700 expected construction jobs, will they still be safe on the job and paid fairly? How will we guarantee residents from the affected zip codes access to these jobs and in turn a pathway to the middle class? Similarly, I still feel that there are gaps in ensuring long-term affordability that these residents stay in their homes. The proposal put forth in this plan represents nothing new for the Jerome Avenue residents, nor even in the city, and that the short-sighted approach to rezoning one of our nation's most poverty-stricken neighborhoods is frustrating and disheartening. We must take more comprehensive approaches to mass rezonings, and we need to plan not just rezone. The, and before we move on to a vote, uh, I believe that Council Members Cabrera and Gibson have statements, and now I will turn it over to Council Member Cabrera. Council Member Gibson, would you like to go first? Ladies first. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to all of my colleagues for being here. I first want to recognize our chair of this subcommittee, um, Council Member Francisco Moya, and all of the members of the committee, and to my colleague and partner in this process, Council Member Fernando Cabrera. Thank you so much to everyone for being here today. Um, today's vote is major progress for the Bronx and for the community that I've had the honor and privilege of representing for the past four plus years. Every day that I wake up, I wake up with the honor to serve the people of District 16. 
and through the challenges, through the hurdles, through the roadblocks, and everything that our district continues to face, yet we still stand, yet we are still ready, willing, and able to work. For three years, since 2014, when the Jerome Neighborhood Plan came before us from the Bronx Department of City Planning, we began a very long and deliberative, collaborative partnership and process. It has not been easy, and getting here today has not been easy. But I am truly, truly confident that after three plus years, we have finally arrived at a neighborhood plan that is based on the passionate input, the consistency, the persistency of partners in our district, of stakeholders at every level of government and every level in our community. I believe that this plan today represents the best interests of Bronx residents who have always lived in our district through the dark days, through the darker days, and certainly through the brighter days. I want to thank everyone who participated in every open house, every visioning session, every round table that my office has hosted, every community meeting, every rally, every part of this process that residents have been engaged in. In particular, I want to recognize the Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz, Jr., and the members of the Borough Board, and certainly Bronx Community Boards 4, Board 5, and Board 7 for devoting so much time and energy into this Jerome neighborhood rezoning. After decades, decades of broken promises and underinvestment, the Jerome Plan will bring real and lasting contributions to the West Bronx and all of its people. I am proud to say that the final plan includes significant investments in creating and also preserving affordable and deeply affordable housing while expanding on the substantial preservation work that's already underway. For three years, in both CB4 and 5, we have preserved 5,500 units of housing. And in this plan, we will achieve even more. While many of the conversations during this planning process have really focused on housing creation, the plan goes much, much far beyond that to include unprecedented capital and programmatic commitments these commitments ensure that comprehensive community development will accompany this rezoning plan. A commitment from the School Construction Authority to build not one, but two brand new 458 seat primary public schools in our district. One in Community District 9 and the other in Community District 10. Both of these school districts are severely overcrowded and have a great need for these additional school seats. The commitment to preserve an additional 2,500 affordable units of housing over the next two years on top of the 5,500 we've already preserved to date. The appointment of a brand new Jerome-specific workforce development coordinator, a body, a person who's going to oversee the entire workforce development work. $1.5 million that is available to our auto businesses to assist them with relocation costs and displacement that we know will occur. The creation of a brand new Jerome Local Hiring and Responsible Contracting Working Group that will be led by Councilmember Cabrera and myself, not the administration, but council members. $60 million for parks in community boards four and five, and this is my personal favorite, $25.7 million for the creation of the Grant Avenue Park and $4.6 million for Corporal Fisher Park in Highbridge. The Jerome Avenue Public Health Task Force will be created and will be led once again by Councilmember Cabrera and myself. 
to address the health disparities along the Jerome Corridor and seek to offset the health impacts that we know we expect with increased construction. We talk about not 62, we talk about the health disparities. This community-led and driven working group will focus on health bucks, fresh programs, DOHMH programs that focus on access to fruits and vegetables and raising the level of quality of life for families that live in our district today. I am proud of all the work that has been done to get us to this day. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But no neighborhood rezoning will ever be perfect because we're imperfect people trying to make our communities better every single day. And we sometimes fall short of perfection, and that's okay. But when we come together and we recognize that we can do better, and through the neighborhood zoning and through the task forces and workforces that we put together, we will achieve even more beyond today's plan. I could not have done any of this without the hard work of the Land Use Division, led by Raju Mann and our program manager, Jeff Ewan, and Dylan Casey and Amy Levitan. They have been my rock through this entire process, and I thank God for them. Our Land Use Chair, Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, who helped me with putting this plan together. Thank you to our subcommittee chair, Francisco Moya, thank you for helping us to get this up and running. To every community group, to every advocacy group, to every tenant leader, to every union member, to every community advocacy group, thank you. We heard you and we listened as much as we could. For those of you that know me, I am a woman of my word. And I promised and committed that I would always listen to every single person that came to me, to my office, that reached out to me. And although we did not achieve everything because no plan is perfect, my commitment remains. Because although we vote today and the city council will be voting in a few weeks, there is a lot more work that remains to be done. And also, I want to recognize and thank the administration, because I yelled and screamed and called and text and screamed some more to make sure that not only did we get capital commitments, but the expense funding that needs to come with it. I recognize every day in my district that people are displaced, tenants are harassed, and that's why I fought to get right to counsel. That's why we fought for a certificate of no harassment to make sure that CBs 4 and 5 are included. We know that much more work remains to be done, but I am proud of where we are today, and I will continue to walk in the pathway of peace, knowing that we achieved an incredible amount of work in this Jerome neighborhood plan. So I thank you to the administration, I thank you to all the advocacy groups, and certainly to my partner, Councilmember Cabrera, and my two dynamic staff who helped me, my Chief of Staff, Dana Wax, and my Deputy Chief of Staff, Wendy Gallegos. Thank you so much, and I encourage all of my colleagues on this committee to please support this plan so we can bring the resources home to the Boogie Down Bronx. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Councilmember Cabrera. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and to uh, members of the committee, thank you so much uh, for having us today. Uh, for the sake of time, um, I would uh, postpone my comments uh, for the Lanch Use Committee. There I'll be uh, giving all my thanks and, uh, and be very detailed. Would that be okay, Mr. Chairman? I think you'll be glad about that. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Some of us will have to be sitting through it, whether it's here or there. <laughs> well, thank Only you once rather than twice. <laughs> Th thank you, council members, for uh, all your hard work on this application. Uh, I will now call a vote to approve LU15 and LU16, the Sea Park North rezoning, 
with a modification to remove MIH option two from the application and to approve LU 17, 18, and 19, the Jerome Avenue rezoning, with the modification that I just described. Are there any questions or remarks from members of the subcommittee? Seeing none. Will the council please call uh, the roll on a vote to approve with modifications LU 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19? Chair Moya. Aye on all. Council Member Constantinides. Aye on all. Council Member Lansman. Aye. Council Member Levin. Aye. Council Member Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Council Member Richards. I vote aye. Council Member Cabrera, or uh, sorry, Rivera. <laughs> Council Member. <laughs> Council Member Torres. I vote aye. And Council Member Gredenchik. Am I the last one to vote? <laughs> How fitting. I vote aye. By vote of nine the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, land use items 15 through 19 are approved with modifications and referred to the full land use committee. That concludes out uh, the meeting for today. Congratulations to Council Member Gibson, Cabrera, and Traeger on their great milestones for their communities. Uh, thank you all for attending. This meeting is adjourned.